Today we're out at this Fort Lauderdale property to search for a valve, a valve or two actually. And I have an idea of where they might be located because I've already located a couple of other valves on the property just by walking around the property. And I've noted those valves on this map here where you can see zone three and zone two are on the map as well as where the controller and backflow are located. Based on that information, I think this valve is located in this corner of the property. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna pull out our 521E locator from Tempo, connect it to the zone number one wire and my ground stake, which happens to be my shovel. And we're gonna track the wire down to where I think the valve might be located, but instead of poking around a 100, 200 square foot section, we're gonna use the locator to pinpoint where we should be poking around. And there's my poker right over there. So let's go ahead and get this set up. We have it set on four because I want to make sure I hear it. You see where the signal dies out right there? That's where the wire is. And I'm going to be looking for, or listening for rather, a very specific tone. Now we don't have to follow this thing exactly. We can go ahead and walk around and get to the other side of the truck and the tree and skip this one too. Because if the line is still going, it means that the valve isn't back there unless somebody connected the wire and let it continue on, which is entirely possible. And if we don't find the valve this way, we'll go back and check underneath all of the trucks. So we're gonna skip this truck. Looks like we can walk back here. So we'll go ahead and we'll keep tracing the wire here. There it is, right up in front of the bushes here. All right, we'll keep going. I mean, we're still getting a signal here. We'll go past this giant tree, which is for sure hugging that pipe or the mainline pipe here. I'm getting a nice crisp signal here. Not the exact signal I'm looking for, but it just means I'm getting closer. Looks like this wire comes a little bit further away from the bushes right here. All right, I'm not going any further from here anyway, unless I have to. So let me turn around. Let me go around all these trucks. Let me see if the signal picks back up on the other side of all of this so that I don't have to go under all those trucks unless I absolutely need to. All right, let's see what we get back here. Well, I can't go that way anymore. It keeps going, so let's go around this trailer. And now, where I believe it to be is in this corner somewhere, which is going to be a little hard to find it if I was just poking around. Let me go over here. I can fit through here so we can try to see if we can track it here. Or right, at least trying to see if it turns. Let's go on the other side of this and see if the wire turns. I'm going to stay away from all of those nails and come over here. Yeah, there we go. There it is. There it is. Do you hear the ticking noise it's making? Now, I don't have my poker stick, so... Oh, let's see. Let's scratch this. Ah, oh, I see it. We just got to get these roofing tiles off of here, and we found the valve. Good stuff. All right, let's do that. So I actually took the time to clean everything up. This thing was full of dirt. I cleaned all the dirt out. I cleaned the valve itself with my little handheld pressure washer. So this turns out to be the main junction in the corner of this property. There isn't another valve between here and the controller, so I can actually move my tracking equipment to this location. Although I won't know what zone numbers these are, so maybe I won't do that. Either way, I found valve number one, that's here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the system because it has a master valve and see what's going on with this valve because maybe we need to replace it. Maybe the solenoid's no good. Now that we found that valve with the 521E locator, we're gonna go turn the system on to see what's wrong with the valve. The valve is stuck open, so I imagine there's debris inside of the valve. But we're gonna play with that flow control because it's also possible that the flow control is stuck or is uh, wide open right now. Look at her, ain't she pretty? I cleaned her up nice and clean because she was gross. All right, we're gonna go ahead and throw on zone number two because that zone is behind me. And it will still kick on the zone at my feet here because that's the one that's stuck open, but it should turn on that zone over there, which it is coming up. And like I said, it's also turning on the zone that's stuck open. So we're gonna go back down to that valve and we'll see what we see. We're gonna go and manually close the valve, move this head out of our way and see where the water stops. And this thing was wide open, just like I thought. Actually, let's stop for a second. Let's see if the valve will shut itself off. Let's make sure the solenoid is tight. Okay, it doesn't seem to wanna shut down, so we'll give it some more. Now this flow control feels a little funny to me, like it's not going to do what I needed to do. Oh, here we go. Let's see if it'll shut on its own. I have it almost all the way closed. You can hear it. All right. So now that valve is off. That should tell me if this other section over here is a separate zone. 
And just as I suspected, it is a separate zone. So that means there's two valves stuck open on this property. We've only found one of them. So now we need to go find the one that's controlling this zone. And then there's one other valve on the property that needs to be located because it just doesn't turn on and it controls the front of the shops. We'll get to that one after this. So there's actually three valves we have to find today. And we found the first one here. We will have to replace this valve. It needs replacing. So we'll go ahead and get that done for them. With zone running from the controller, we can use our multimeter to confirm that zone one is in fact running from the controller. All right, now that we know the valve location, we can go ahead and mark it on our map. We also know that the valve waters a different area than I have marked here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the polygon I have here. And I'm going to add a new polygon that travels the whole length of the back of this property. We'll zoom in this time so I don't mess it up. And there you have it. We'll confirm the polygon. We'll call it zone one. And we're done. The only other thing to do is the very important task of marking exactly where the valve location is. And we're going to do that here. We're going to give it a name, just the number one, and hit done. And just to show you guys that that's actually where the valve is, I'm standing over it right now. We're going to hit the GPS button. Now, as soon as my phone collects the GPS data from where I'm standing, it will put me right over the valve. And there you have it. So you know how I said I would need to go to the controller to track the wires because I didn't know what the wire numbers were here? Well, I went ahead and identified all of the wires here using my multimeter and the controller itself. By turning on each zone, I went and looked for 24 volts on each of the wires and I numbered them. Now, of course, my number book ran out of the early numbers like 1 through 10, so I used 11 through 15 to mark the five zones. And then I used 47 to mark the master valve wire here. So now I know what all of these wires are and I can start tracking from this point instead of all the way back at the controller. I do know that zone one, two, and three, I know the locations of those valves. So I just need to find four and five. I don't necessarily need to find the master valve because it's working just fine. Zones four and five are not working just fine. So that's gonna be this wire and this wire that I have marked 14 here. So we're gonna go ahead and start tracking those two wires to find the other two valves. Oh yeah, and before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and clean up all this wiring because it's a mess and I'm going to put in all new wire nuts. All right, now that we've cleaned up the wires that we know are working, we're left with the two wires that aren't working or we don't know the locations of the valves for. So we're going to go ahead and clean those up next. I just wanted to check in and show you that when I clean up wires, I cut out the connection completely and rewire it with a brand new connection. I don't just put new wire nuts on it and move on. So those are all brand new connections. They're solid, good to go. I even rewired this valve back in, but I'll probably have to replace it. We're gonna go ahead and start tracking these two wires next. Before I do that though, I would like to point out that I did put the stickers on these wires from the wires coming into this valve box from the controller. So I know that this wire is coming from the controller and this wire is going to the valve. So when I go to check or track the wires, I'm not gonna to connect to this one. It'll lead me right back to the controller. I'm gonna to connect to this one going to the valve. Let me show you guys something that doesn't happen to me too often, but I know the solution to this problem. I was trying to get a good ground so that I can start tracing this wire. And everywhere I stuck my screwdriver, because this place hasn't had irrigation for a while, it was too dry. So I went ahead and stuck my screwdriver in the ground right here and pulled it back out. And I used the bottle of water to fill that hole so that the ground would be super moist. Then I shoved my screwdriver back into the ground, packed the dirt around it, added some more water to make the whole area nice and moist and that will give us a way better earth ground. And that's exactly what happened because before I did this, and I wish I would have filmed it, that transponder, or transmitter rather, was reading nothing on it. It wasn't sending out a signal because it wasn't getting a good earth ground. Using the water on the ground with the earth ground stake, or in this case, the screwdriver, makes the earth ground better for your tracking purposes. If this doesn't work, you can use salt water. It works even better than regular water, but this works for me today. Let's get to tracking this next valve. All right, looks like it went that direction over there. We'll walk around the trash can, pick it up over here, and right where we're losing the signal is right where the wire is. So we'll just follow this, and we're going to skip some spots, and if we have to go back, we will, just like we did last time. Actually, we didn't have to go back last time. We skipped the spots and ended up finding the valve. But as long as I pick up the signal over here, like so, then for sure this wire is still traveling in this direction. All right. Let's hope it's not under the box truck here, but if it is, we'll get them to move it. All right. That doesn't seem to be the case. We're still going. Unfortunately, we hit the pipe when we were fixing that. Now I'm going slower because I know that this line has to turn somewhere because the backflow is right in front of the building there. This is where at 90s, no signal. And then if we pop out over here, 
So there could be a valve box in this area, although I'm not getting that indication on my locator. You know what? This is bringing us to the valve in the front of the building, not to the one on that corner. So that must be the other wire that I have in there. I know that I have to find the valve that's stuck open over there and that's probably on that corner. But this valve or this wire is leading me to the valve that waters the front of the stores or the front of these businesses. Now I know I have the valve box for zone number three right there. I don't think that these keep going. I guess we're gonna find out. I guess it does keep going. All right, well, come along with me while I try to figure it out. That's suspicious. And I know the valve for zone number two is at the end of these bushes here. Let's see, gotta get to the other side of these bushes real quick. Actually, that's good news for me because it's no longer, I mean, it's over this valve box, but that's not picking that up. There must be another valve somewhere around to the other side of this red truck. Because I know all the front of the shops here didn't get any water when we did our inspection. So there's gotta be another valve somewhere. Nope, not finding that one. Let's go ahead and track the other wire and see if we can just rule some stuff out. There it is. You hear the chirp noise? How much you want to bet? Let me go get the poker. I'll say it's right here. All right. Bingo! Every irrigation technician's favorite sound when you're looking for valve boxes. Well, and our favorite color, green. Let me go ahead and get this cleaned up and see what's inside. Well, here I am in the middle of cleaning up this valve taking all the dirt out, I spread it out all over the place here. I am gonna clean this valve out enough so that I can access the solenoid and be able to see what's going on with it. I imagine we're gonna have to replace this valve as well, but we're gonna try to adjust the valve first. All right, now that we got the valve all cleaned up, let's go ahead and turn on the system again and see if this is the valve that's controlling that zone. I imagine it is since the solenoid is going in that direction. All right, before we go and turn the system on, let's go ahead and note where this valve is located on the property using Erie plans. And here we are with the map. Our GPS location is locked in. We're gonna go ahead and throw the valve right here. And we're gonna call it zone number five, or four rather, because that's what it is. And we're gonna hit done. Now that we've got this valve on Erie Plan's map, we can go turn on the system and do what we were trying to do. And we're back with the system on. So let's go ahead and adjust this flow control and see if we can get the zone to turn itself off. All right, I feel like the valve wants to close. I know if I turn this one more time, it'll shut the zone down, but I want to see if it'll do it on its own. All right, well, at least we got the zone shut off, and now I know that it definitely waters in the front of the building over there because that also shut off. So we can add that to our map, clean that up so that we know what's getting watered where and what zone number it is, but this valve will have to be replaced. So with the valve cleaned and the two wires I want to work with identified, this is for zone number five here. And of course I marked the wire that's going back to the controllers. So I actually want to, I actually want to track this wire here that I have coiled with it to remember where it was connected before. The other wire I have disconnected over here and marked as zone 48 is the master valve. And since that we're so close to where it's probably at, I'm going to go ahead and track that out and figure out where that's at. It's likely going to be right next to the backflow. That's right there. So, We'll go ahead and get our 521E tracker uh, connected and connect it to my ground rod screwdriver and we'll start tracking zone number five first. No luck with zone five just yet. So we're gonna go ahead and look for the master valve. So it'll be the only other valve that we haven't found. We have it connected to the master valve wire. So let's go ahead and start tracking that. Now it's gonna take the same path as all the other wires. And I imagine the master valve is gonna be somewhere next to this backflow. There's the wire, I'm losing the signal altogether. That's annoying. Still got a signal here. Ah, ha, ha. there's that chirping noise or it's like ticking right there. Let me go ahead and leave my locator right there. I have my poker. Let's go ahead and poke around. Bingo, there it is. All right, let me go grab my shovel, clean this one up. But before I get ahead of myself, let me go ahead and turn off the tracker and then we'll go ahead and redo the wire connections here for a few of the other wires and then we'll go ahead and start back with 15 again well after we clean out the valve box over there sorry i'm a little bit all over the place it's my adhd get my mind set to something and then i start doing it and then i get my mind set to something else and then i start doing something else but i'll get everything done before the next guy trust me all right we got all those wire connections clean with the exception of the wire i still need to track but i'm not going to leave this out here because i'm going to go work over there and this won't be in my sight one of the things I like about this unit is that it can just be tossed into the truck like so. I can lock the truck up and then pay no attention to that area over there while I go 
uncover this valve over here. This is our master valve, and that's what it looks like when you pull the top off, completely full of dirt. So give me a few minutes, I'll clean this up, and we'll be able to see what's on the inside here, including the wrong wire nut. Well, I got it all cleaned out, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple new wire nuts on that one because I'm not gonna leave those little yellow wire nuts on there. And I'll show you what it looks like in just a second when we get over here. There you have it, there's our master valve. We're gonna replace those two yellow wire nuts with dielectric wire nuts so that this will survive. We definitely don't want this on the common wire because then the whole damn system will stop working. And not to mention that this is the master valve, so if it stops working, well, then the system doesn't work. I imagine that's why this valve was replaced recently. This is the newest valve on the property until I find number five, which is the only one I haven't seen yet. All of the other valves are the original valves to the system. This one was upgraded at some point in time. All right, I'm gonna get both of these wire nuts changed out. And then we're gonna go right back over there to those wires and track zone number five, which is the last valve we need to find on the property. All right, that's better. We can go ahead and put the wires back in here because this valve, we know the location of it now. It does work and we cleaned it all up and fixed the wires. So not that they, they just needed to be corrected because we can't leave the wire nuts like that. Now we can find the master valve easily. On to zone five. Well, you remember on my map when I said that this front stores area was a different zone? Well, it's not. I just found out. I opened up the valve for zone number three, which waters this island here and all the way around the parking lot to discover we've got a pretty good broken pipe right here. So that tells me that this same zone waters at least this front stuff. I'm not sure about that one over there. I'm actually gonna go manually close this zone and open the valve by that tree over there which may water all of that. We're gonna find out now. I might not be looking for a fifth valve. There might not be one here. Which would explain why I've been pulling my hair out of my head. Might not be a fifth valve, might just be a spare wire. Probably is a spare wire, but I need to check everything before I can say that. So like I said, let me shut this zone off and go check the other one. You see, I knew that zone two watered this area behind me, but I was turning it on from the controller, which is back there behind the building. So when I saw it turn on it, that was zone two. Never walked out front to see that this area also comes on along with the center median or island there in the middle of the parking lot. That tells me this is a four zone system. That fifth wire is a spare and we did find all of the valves on the property. So now we can write the customer proposal to replace the two valves that are not working correctly and possibly that third one over there because it's leaking. I'll let the customer know. We also have some other fun things to fix like this sprinkler head at the bottom of this tree here. That'll be fun. Other than that, we've done what we needed to do here. We found all the valves thanks to our Tempo 521E locator. Thanks Tempo, that thing is awesome. It rocks, it does the job just like it should. If you guys are interested, go get yourselves one. It's an affordable locator and it does the job perfectly and it's very versatile. I like taking it out of the box and moving it around where I need to put it. I can hide it in the bushes if I need to. It's a great tool. All right, with that said, on to the next one.